This video is diagnosing what has gone wrong with my brand new Nordic Track RW900 rower. I've gone through several rounds of tech support, haven't really had any help. Had a technician come out here, also didn't help. The problem is when you set this rower on highest or lowest resistance and you proceed to pull on this handle here, there is no perceived difference in the amount of force that it takes. Why is that? How can it be that everything looks great, support technician thinks it's awesome, and yet it doesn't work? This video and the series after are going to dig into what is the problem, both scientifically and mechanically, and then how to fix it and a demonstration of that. In this video, I'm going to examine how the magnet works by creating resistance as it moves when you adjust the resistance on the display. The display has a number between 1 and 26 for resistance. The number 26 is where it's currently set, and this motor rotates, pushing or pulling on this arm, in this case, pushing to increase resistance, has caused, here's the uh, fulcrum there, this plastic mechanism moves and pushes to this point, and you can see that the center of the plastic is aligned with the center of the metal on the wheel. Now the magnet is located right there. That's the magnet. So the magnet is attracting the wheel here. You can feel it. But that's not really where the resistance comes from. As the metal moves inside of the field created by this magnet, this is metal moving within a magnetic field. It creates a current, an eddy current that moves in a circle on this piece of metal. Now, a current moving in a circle creates a magnetic field. And what happens is the motion of this metal in this magnetic field creates a current, which creates its own magnetic field, which attracts this magnet. So as it moves past this magnet, the motion causes it to attract even harder. And the way the motor adjusts it is by pulling this out of alignment. When I push it to uh, resistance one, the lowest resistance, you can see it's pulling on this motor, which pulls on this plastic, which moves about this fulcrum. And you can see now it has pulled this magnet way out of alignment. It's not over this at all. Just this corner of the magnet is barely over the metal. So there's still a little bit of eddy current. What is wrong with this machine? Everything looks perfect. We can see that the magnet is moving the way it should. The magnet is strong like it should be. The answer here, when you come over and look, is the distance between these. Now I've used this caliber to measure it at 0 0.299 inches. And what happens with an eddy current is it increases with the inverse square of the distance. And that means reducing this distance just a little bit will have an effect that causes a greater current, a greater responding magnetic field, and a greater attraction between this wheel and that magnet and more resistance. In the next video, we're going to take this off and see how we're going to make that happen. In this video, we're going to take off the magnet assembly. There's a, an Allen wrench screw here. Now I've loosened this before the video. It's normally quite tight. I'm trying to make this quick and easy. So we've taken off one, and we're going to take off the other. When you take off this one, this little washer here will fall out. Don't lose that. You're going to need that when you put it together. I've left it off for this video. Okay, now I'm going to gently pull back on this, not too hard. I don't want to damage any of these mechanisms over here. I've slid that out of the way, and now this can move forward, and I have the magnet assembly. Oops, sorry about that. You can see that the magnet is quite strong. Okay, what are we looking at? We are looking at two permanent magnets that have been glued onto a base bar 
careful about that. That glue looks pretty fragile. I doubt heavy impacts are going to... I think the glue will be broken loose by heavy impact, so don't. So there's two screws here holding this into the plastic. And we need this magnet to be not flush with the black plastic base. We need the magnet to be closer to the wheel. Ideally, I would like to alter this in a way that's adjustable, finely adjustable, so I can tune it. Now, there's another mechanical problem going on here. The wheel, the fan, as they call it. It didn't spin true when I got it. As I spun it, it was wobbling, and there's still a slight wobble in and out. And you can fix that, maybe, by one of two ways. There's a, there's a bolt here that you can tighten down a lot, or you can remove this bolt, and you're going to also need a crank puller to take this out, and you can try reseating it. And I did that several times and used a rubber mallet and gently tapped on it in just the right way that I believe this spins pretty close to true. And that means when I adjust the magnet now with this mechanism that I'm going to alter on this piece and I get a fixed distance, that's the distance that'll be used as the wheel spins all the way around. In the next video, I'll show you how I made that. Now in this video, you'll see that I have two pieces of these magnets because Nordic Track thought that if they kept sending me parts, maybe one of them would magically fix it. It didn't. Lucky for me, that makes it easier to have a before and after video. So this is the unmodified magnet where this piece is fixed flush in there. Here's my modified version. I've drilled some holes so that some uh, four millimeter metric screws can fit through there. And the reason I chose metric is to find a really fine thread because I, the thread on the screw is going to help us adjust the depth of the magnet. And out the back, we can compare these side by side. I've taken this little ridge here and here, and I've clipped it off so that when I put the screw in from the back, a washer will sit flush. What I've done is I've screwed a lock washer, a lock nut, on there, and I've screwed it almost all the way down. So we have, going from the back, a washer, the lock nut, and the end of the screw. And I'm going to push that through. Now on the other end, I've used my grinder to take one of these uh, lock washers, and I've turned it smooth. It no longer has any uh, facets on it to fit a wrench. And the reason I'm going to do that is when it screws on there like that and this magnet is underneath that, there wasn't enough clearance with an entire unaltered nut to spin. It would hit this magnet. And the plan for the adjustment mechanism is I need the end to spin. So I have taken a grinder and I have carefully rounded two of these nuts. I'm going to stop this video and I'll pick this up after I put this together. Okay, I have just now assembled it, and I've screwed each of these rounded nuts on there until the thread just barely comes out the other side. Now, I recommend a thread lock on there to make sure. So what's going to happen is this magnet can now come forward quite a bit. And after this is installed, if I wish to adjust the depth, and I might need to adjust the depth of the front and back separately because this mechanism is not aligned with the wheel another design flaw. And it's important that the gap between this side of the magnet and the fan and this side of the fan be the same size gap. So what I'm going to do in order to adjust that is use a pair of pliers to hold that nut and then a screwdriver to adjust the screw. And by doing that, I'm sliding this nut on the back up or down. And that adjusts how far this magnet pulls. And again, the reason I rounded that nut was so that I had plenty of clearance as it spins. I don't want that nut to ever move on the bolt. I need it to stay right where it is. If it comes off, this magnet could fly into the flywheel and cause damage. We wouldn't want that. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to mount this on the rower, and we'll see how it works in adjusting the gap. Here's the replacement magnet holder 
mounted onto the rower. Again, a little demonstration of how are we going to adjust the depth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just the nut, not the screw, and then I'm going to take a screwdriver and turn that screw. And as I screw the screw going into the nut, it's going to make the magnet closer to the back here, to the spinning fan. And as I unscrew the screw, it's going to pull the magnet away. And I'm able to adjust both the front and the back. And now, when you look in here, you can see this gap is much tighter. And the, the new distance is... Well, I think I just bumped that. It was about 0 0.08. About that much. 0 0.08 inches. So... I'll do an analysis of the force difference and the equation of how much gap did we change and how much force is different. But I can tell you from experience pulling on the handle and rowing hard, it is absolutely clear in perception that there is much more force here in the 26 position than further down in the one position. And that's how this is supposed to work. So this, this whole saga, brand new rower, it seems that the Nordic Track Corporation doesn't understand the principles of physics on how their equipment operates or how to test them for quality. Because if anyone had tried this piece of equipment, it would have worked. They would have, I'm going to say it would have failed. Or they would have known for certain that the adjustable resistance wasn't happening. And the reason I had to go to all this effort to modify this mount is that this is a welded mount up here. There's no adjusting how this plastic screws into the frame. This is welded. And I suspect that Nordic Track has a strong vested interest in not shipping a new frame or an entire new rower. And they knew that replacing all the other pieces wouldn't work. So basically they told me that this rower is working perfectly normal. There's nothing you can do. And it's, it's actually ludicrous that anyone would spend this much money for a top-of-the-line rower where you couldn't tell in any way that any resistance had altered between the numbers 1 and 26. Clearly not how the product was meant to operate. So we've gained about 0.12 inches of tighter clearance between the fan and the magnet. There's no bumping. It's smooth as glass. And this rower now operates like it should. Perhaps Nordic Track could notice this and improve their design. But I would say, looking at other rowers, how most of them work, they put the metal strip on the outside of the fan here, and uh, a magnet peels and pushes down on the outside. And what that does is it causes the attraction force to be pulling on this wheel, which is pulling against the center of rotation. And that's much stronger. What's happening in this model is the magnet is pulling here, and you've got this giant fulcrum between the center of the wheel and here, which means this magnet has a lot of leverage. And so that pulling force is trying to warp this whole fan wheel in and out. And as you can see, it's pretty flexible. It's not that strong. So they've designed this magnetic resistance mechanism to take advantage in the weakness of their product. I think they really need to go back to the design board on this and put the magnet on the outside. The reason they didn't, I suspect, put the magnet on the outside is that's where the fan is. What does this fan do? There's this air fan and it makes a big rushing sound and there's a lever up here where you can adjust the air resistance, but it doesn't do much. You know what I think it does? I think the air resistance makes it sound like the rower is doing something. And I think the marketing department told the engineers Silent resistance isn't going to work. You have to make this sound like something impressive or customers won't believe it's working. So the engineers probably listened to them and came up with this rather flawed design. I don't know. That's just my guess.